integrate this value into the design. This is known as the edge. It is where the highest yields and most energy are found. And this is a fact. The places, what is it, does anybody know where the majority of human beings live? What, 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 um, here, let me water. ask the question. What are you going to say? Near water. Exactly. Yeah. Why? Why is it? We <laughs> need water. We, we need water, but you can find water all kinds of places. So what, give me another reason. Why do you think the majority of the cities, the largest populations of human beings live on coast? Why is that? Other ideas? Convenience, transportation. Sure, getting in a boat, going somewhere, sure. Trolley. Some say we came from the sea originally. Sure. Our biology, the fact that we're made up of the majority of water. Sure. One of the major reasons, though, that we're missing here is because the edge where land masses meet water, that coast, that shore, happens to have the most abundant forms and diversity of food and life and potential growing climates. So you have trees, usually maybe mountains, you have, you have kind of like forest or land bases meeting a water base where there's fish, where there is sand, where there's building materials, where there's rocks, where there's open space, where there's closed space. In other words, everything you need is, is right there at that edge where two or more systems meet. That's why the mandala was found to be so successful in producing uh, so much energy and so, and so many crops is because wherever there's an edge, wherever the edge of many systems meet, and the more systems the better. So say you have a forest meeting an ocean. There's two edges, right? That's good. That's, that's where you want to be, right near that edge, because you're going to be able to find all kinds of things you need there. But what if we have a desert that meets a forest that meets an ocean that meets a grassland? What if four systems interact right in one area? Right, so the more places you can find to interact, again, and this goes back to diversity, so the more people we can bring into this movement, the more interaction we can get, the stronger and the more abundance we're going to get. Of course, there's always the problem of chaos, <laughs> but we'll figure this that kind out. Of goes it's human nature and chaos. Being this grand crossroads exactly. between the continents. Anyway. No, absolutely, a perfect point. If you look at the Mediterranean, which is sometimes... Desert, water, Forests, mountains, mountains. All there. absolutely. It's no, it's no accident that that's considered the cradle of civilization. It's no accident. It's where art and language flourished, where the first um, city started. It's not an accident. Um, number twelve: creatively use and respond to change. Um, this is the final of the principles. So become aware of yourself within the sustainable design. Predict or theorize future potential outcomes and anticipate design modifications. A lot of words, but basically what it means is that integrate yourself into the design. Make sure you're, you see yourself as part of the design that you're doing. And once you feel you're, you're part of it and you're well into this design you're creating, make sure you're able to look forward a little bit. And you should be able to, like for example, if I planted 100 uh, blueberry bushes, and I knew that in two years they're going to start producing. After those two years, I'm going to get my first harvest of blueberries. I should be able at that point to figure out, um, you know, I can expect this much every year for the next 10 or 15 years, right? So then I can start to, to theorize that, you know, I, I can't eat this many, so I could easily feed another 20 people because I know I'm going to have the food to do that. So start to see what you're creating, start to theorize how you can then use that to uh, meet people's basic needs, uh, support the ecosystem that you're living in. Um, so again, going back to, did everybody hear the three ethics? Because those, those I want to report. Was anybody here? Earth care, people care, fair care. Fair, fair share. share. Yeah. So just going to go over those really quickly because they're just very important. These are the, the ethics behind uh, permaculture. So earth care is just acknowledging that the earth is the source of all life, all abundance, and that we need to take care of it. We need to actually take care of it. Uh, people care means working cooperatively to find solutions to meet basic human needs and building healthy societies. So it means instead of competing with each other, we work with each other. Instead of fighting with each other, we try to get along and we try to meet each other's needs. Like, it's an acknowledgement of, hey, Ronnie, I'm in the same situation you are, brother. Exactly. I need housing. I right. need food. I need someone to care for right. me when I'm sick. I got a feeling you do, too. You know, like, right. it's just basic reality. I got the money. You got the workers. Work right. together. Work together. So um, there's, another, there's, a, there's another thing that I want to talk about in the design, and it's called zones. In permaculture, you have this zero through five zone. 
And in a design, you look at where the maximum use of energy is. So for example, if we're looking, if I'm going to build a house, right, the maximum use of energy in that design is going to be the house itself, where I'm living. That's where I'm going to use water, electricity, I'm going to be making food every day, I'm going to be uh, you know, cleaning clothes and washing dishes and watching TV or whatever it is. You know, you, the most use of energy is going to be in zone zero, where you're living. Where, where the hardest impact is between you and nature. You're going to have the greatest footprint at zone zero. Zone one is the very immediate structure. That might be the house itself or the, you know, 20 feet around the house. It's a little less energy intensive, but still, you know, you're know, you still going to be digging gardens and, and putting clothes lines up. You're still going to be having a pretty heavy impact on zone one, too, but a little less than <coughs> zone zero. Zone two might have gardens little farther out, maybe a lawn that you're not on that much, you know, who knows what, but little less impact in zone two. Zone three, you start to get into um, maybe uh, very little all, maybe a trail here or there. Zone four is basically wild. Zone five is wilderness, untouched, pristine. So um, when you're doing a design, you want to include 0 through 5 in your design. You want to be looking at, like for example, say if we were to use all these principles when we first got on Niagara Square. We already have a mandala here, by the way, you know, this is a mandala, right? So say, and I actually, I remember the first week I was here, I was trying to get people interested, but it was too chaotic, no one would listen to me, so I gave up. But, but if we would have used these principles, we would have set up this camp very differently than the way we did. And it yeah. probably would have been much more functional because we would have first just looked at what we had. So we would have. What'd you say? This weekend. That's right. That's good. We have That's a chance. Right. Yeah. We have a chance. For sure we <laughs> so maybe it's just apropos that this <laughs> came up right now, right? Unintentional. That's right. There are synchronicities, there are no That's accidents, right. right? No coincidences. <laughs> so. Zero through five is, is a zone mentality where you're looking at your design and you want to make sure that most of your resources are brought to zone zero and that you're the most aware and conscious of your impact and footprint. And really zone zero through two is the most important to pay attention of your impact because that's where you're going to screw things up. You know, that's where you're going to pollute, that's where you're going to harm the environment if you're not paying attention. Uh, but of course you so, could interact, which is Zone zero through two, basically. Zero, one, and two are where the most impact is between us and nature. That's where we do the most things. It's where we use the most energy. It's where we um, alter the terrain the most. Albert, should we think of it as a circular pattern? Yes. In fact, if you look at it, that's exactly what it looks like. Look, at, Think of it as a bullseye. Zero would be the tiny dot in the middle, and then there'd be a little round, a little zone just past that. That would be one, two three, four, and then five yeah. would be out here, right? And that's really untouched, number five is untouched. So think of that. You know, the, the topic you brought up about it, we implicated it when it first happened, the square. If you look at zero, zero could be that, that actually that where the monument is. Well, actually, and we don't use it that out. much. Well, what no, we use. that's the problem, we don't. If we use that, uh, implicate that monument for for like rallies, meetings, stuff like that, it will bring a lot more people. But let me ask you this, what what would be so if we're looking at if we're looking at the, the square right now, the way we do use it, what would be zone zone zero here? The phallic symbol. No. <laughs> well, where, where do we use the most energy? Thank Food you. Food 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 yeah, that would be zone zero. That's oh, where people are. That's where electricity is always going. Comfort. There's always food Comfort going and there. Food and, warm. and there's always people there, right? Exactly. There's always people there exactly. doing something, Two. eating, talking, mm -hmm. turning things on, turning things off, computers. Yeah. That's the most energy intensive use of the area is in, in our design here, which is fairly unintentional. <laughs> We're just kind of. It's just like it. at home. Where, where do families congregate the most? Living. At the kitchen right. and in the living room. That's right. You have food and comfort. Watch TV or you talk. Right. So it's the same thing over here. Same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you get older, the bathroom. <laughs> so I now want to open this up a little bit into a discussion. Um, I gave you the principles, and you can ask me questions. We can go over them if you if you want to hear more about it. But I want to now ask you, how can we take some of these very important principles and apply them, not only physically but even socially, to our group 
now.